All right, hello everybody in YouTube land. This is gonna be my last video I do on my Hot Blast 1500. <laughs> Unless something comes up, I will. Hopefully this will be the last I do on this. Uh, we were discussing in a few of my other videos about the coal burning and everything. Uh, burning wood in them. I've had mine for 13 years, you know. So we're gonna get on with it. Hopefully I won't make this too long. I don't ramble. Guys, forgive me. Ladies, forgive me. But let's get on with it. All right, we had a couple of comments. My last comment, I told a gentleman that I would do a video that night. And it's been a little over a month. And I didn't do that video. I'm doing it now. Uh, Ask questions about. I had a question about uh, the door damper. Let's close this up. I want you to see the inside of it, okay? See where it draws air in from the inside. These door dampers on 1500, <laughs> about closing them off. These are a little barometric deal on these doors. There it is. It's in, you got a high, medium, low, and a, a closed position, which they're not closed. So it will not close completely off. You still have about a little over eighth, eighth of an inch or something like that in there. They do not com close completely off, but it does not affect period of how your coal burns. Now, what what the deal is that when these dampers, the way these are designed, that's why they said, you know, I was told even at the time when I purchased this unit, bought everything brand new from U.S. Stove, uh, you do not need a damper in your flue, which this year, you know, you've seen one of my other videos, I put one in. With that being said, uh, the damper, how this works, this is a barometric deal. If you got it set on high, it's open all the way when it's cold, and when the stove heats up, it closes off. Now, this stays on your setting right here, but that's your setting where it's going to open back up to when it starts cooling off. If you had it set on medium, that's where it's at. When the stove gets hot, it shuts down. When it open, when it cools off, that damper in there opens back up. But that is wherever you have that set. That is far as your damper will open. So with that being said, you can't shut this completely down. And like I said, I think, and if you look back at a couple of my other videos, I've seen people where they've shoved insulation in these doors and everything else. No, 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 no. no need for doing that. No. no. I don't know if it's their their pipe going out, their you know their your climate. You got to learn your stove. You got to understand a little bit about pressures in your home, the pressure and how the atmosphere, everything works. You know, in in how your pipe goes up and out through your home, how you got it run. So draw is everything for these you know units. Uh, there is no reburn tubes in here. That was something else I want to hit on. There's no reburn tubes in these stoves. If you know, I've seen bigger units or units actually this size. The newer models after 2017, uh, a stove like mine cannot be considered be considered a multi fuel as coal and wood, which this one is. You can burn coal or you can burn wood in it. After 2017, they're either designated either one or the other, a coal or wood, for your fuel. And they have these catalytic convert, uh, 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 as they call them, a catalytic converter. <laughs> Why, well, similar to like something on your car. And they are a little tricky to learn. I, I know a guy that's got one of these stoves. That is, it's not one of these. It's a... Uh, I think it's a hearth or something like that. Anyway, he could he had two options. He could have bought the one with reburn tubes, which that would be my way to go if he was going to buy one, or the catalytic filters. Now, with the catalytic filters, you got to understand they work differently. You've got to have your stove up to a certain temperature. For them to work to get that secondary burn, as they say, reburns, get that secondary burn out of it, out of your smoke and everything on the pipe. Now, 
if you don't want your stove like it, like I've said in my other videos about the climate I live in, it's, you know, temperatures can be cold for two or three days, then be warm for two or three days a week, you know, differently. And I burn this stove, This and this is a furnace, I burn this lower a lot of times than most people would burn this thing. You know, this is something that you just don't typically, uh, you wouldn't see this type of unit probably in my area in a home unless somebody was thinking the same way. Well, I got something that I can stoke up, heat the home just fine with. I got something that I can heat the home just fine with. I don't have to run so hard. You know, just just wanted that extra, that little bit more, like me. I didn't want something that was trying to and then having to come in here. Oh, well, it didn't quite, it, it does the job, but then you have to come back and tend it later a lot more. So I, I wanted something big enough to where I knew to do the job. I can burn it a lot lower if I want to. Am I worried? Was I worried about creosilt and stuff building up my pipe? I'd never have. In all the years I've had this, I, I've never worried about it. I, like I said, I, I, I do good to get a pint of creosilt every year, just burning wood until this year out of that pipe. <laughs> so, um, with all that being said, that's that when it comes to that. And so, when it comes to this stove, I love them. You have to learn your stove. No matter what you buy, learn how to operate your stove for your area, your climate. Make sure you have your pipes run properly. Make sure, you know, you're getting the proper drafts you need. Everything, you know, just there, everything. You got to learn your stove. That's all there is to it. Just learn your stove. I don't know what else to say for that. You know, I'm not no scientist, so I'm not going to go there with that. Uh, but going back to the little... The stoves they make these days that have uh, uh, catalyst uh, filters in them to reburn tubes. The catalyst filters have to be at a certain temperature to do the to do the secondary burn uh, to get that secondary burn to get more efficiency out of your stove. And a lot of times in where I'm at, you, I mean, I don't need that. I, why, why would I want to burn this stove? at a 500 degree temperature all the time when I don't need that. Maybe I'm going to have a night or two of real cold temperatures. The days are going to be mild. Then I'm going to have a couple of days of warmer temperatures and a couple of nights of warmer temperatures. I don't want this thing running at 500 degrees. It'll run us out of here, period. It'll run us plumb out of here. I'm not opening every door, window in the house just to calm that down when I want to keep a nice, consistent little fire going to burn. And like I said, the lower, slower you burn, of course. Do you get more creosilt? Yes. But that's why these stoves were designed the way they were. And then depending on your wood, how seasoned your wood is, how green it is, do you mix it? Are you burning green wood, seasoned, blah, blah, blah. So everybody learn your stove. I've learned mine. It took me a couple of years burning different types of wood, seasoned, seasoned, good seasoned wood, uh, mixed with green and seasoned, burning just green wood. I learned my stove. So with that being said, learn your stove. Now, let's go back to the uh, questions again that I had uh, comments. You know, and like I said, everybody was real thoughtful. I really appreciate your comments. One guy... Uh, Go back to burning the coal, because I said I was going to learn how to burn the coal this season. <laughs> we had a mild winter, but then there for a couple of weeks, two, three weeks there, we had some good cold weather to where I could burn the coal constantly. Now, from bituminous to the anthracite, mainly the anthracite, but with, I burned both in here, but I burnt the anthracite mainly. And with that being said, he was talking about, we was talking about how, if you've seen my other videos about how the coal burns in the stove and how I serviced my last video, I think, how I serviced mine. Uh, uh, I like how he put it. Uh, his uh, woodchuck manual said to take the uh, ash pan out. Well, if you was in a, in a more traditional type like a chubby or Mark Harmon or a pot belly type, 
uh, you know, that would probably be a possible, that's, that's a good possibility. But in them, the way they're designed, it's like a a dump. It's a, a you know, more of a bucket shape. You know, even if they're a square type, you know, they have where you pile the coal in. It's piled in probably within 10 to 10, no more than 12 inches of a box and no wider than 18 inches or so. Okay, it piles in it, and it's going to burn from the bottom up. It's going to burn pretty much nice and even. Um, and then that all depends on how, like I said, area, how you have it, how, how you damper it, the airflow, like mine. Here's my airflow through the bottom door, your ash pan door. <laughs> there it is. Uh, you know, it, it all depends. And on them, you know, that yes. The, they burn different. This here, you got a 30 inch of a bed of a stove here, a furnace. So you have to layer it in. It's not just dump the coal in there and let her go. <laughs> you have to actually layer coal in to fill a 30 inch bed. And I think I said in my last video, I, I tried half a bed, blah, 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 blah. None of that works. It You could get away with it, but I guarantee you, you're going to find it's more trouble than it's worth. You want just a nice, fine little layer across here. And you're going to have this stove burning anywhere between 300 to 450 degrees just fine with uh, 25 degree temperatures outside. And you're going to be comfortable. You're going to be fine. Uh, so uh, as far as taking the ash pan out, that's a no-no. This is all space you got. You take the ash pan out, you can see here, ash pan ain't but what, two inches thick there. I mean, to try to take a shovel, <laughs> even make a shovel, to go back in there and get all that out. All I can see is somebody getting hurt or whatever, it's just more trouble than it's worth. The stove gets good air. It's just you do have more air in the front here because of the long bed. That's why when I said I was going to learn how to run, you know, burn the coal in the stove and how to set, you know, I got that bottom door is everything. I could, this right here, the uh, damper here, you can still leave it just like you was, guys. Personally, you can leave it on high, leave it on medium. I've never turned mine down past medium. I've always pretty much left it on high because it closes off. Don't worry about that one. <coughs> it's that airflow coming in. And I've had to open it a little more with the wood. I mean, with the coal. So, um, with all that being said, you're going to be just fine if you service it like I did. That way you're not, when you when you go and shake your grates, you're not losing any of your good coals in the front because the back hasn't burnt up the coals as much. It does burn good in the evening, even, but... If you don't have, say, an even layer, you got a little bit more in the back or a little bit more in the front, you know, you're, you're not going to be perfect with your shovel. You know, shoveling these coals in and layer them in there. Because this, like I said, this is layers. This is not like filling up a, a, a hole here in a bucket like in a Chubby or a Mark Harmon or a pot belly. Just pile it in there and then you're good to go. This is a little different. Because this is a furnace with a 30-inch bed, so you have to make a layer. So, yes, taking the uh, pan out, that's not an option. So when you shake your grates and stuff, you know, you're, you're not going to want to sit here and be trying to shovel out ash under this. So, with the guy with the wood chat manual, thank you for the comment, but not in this particular stove. It's just learning how to use the stove. Uh, but thank you for the comment. I did like the way you put that, though. <laughs> okay. Now, another guy said, uh, is that just Luan behind your stover? Okay. Yes, it is. Just Luan. This is just uh, my old back porch. I closed the box it in and figured it'd be a perfect place to put this. <coughs> I checked with all my insurance, codes, everything. And even by the top of the, the codes, it's got, it's got your, you know, your wall clearance and all on this plate up here. And uh, I checked with all that before I even put the stove in here. This thing can be running at 550, 600 degrees. 
this wall's not even hot. So I am within my code. I did everything I'm supposed to do. Uh, just like I, I think I mentioned this in another video, the uh, fire retardant boards, you know, I got one here and I actually got one under my blowers back there. So there you go with that. Uh, you're good with that. Not a problem. And uh, if this was now, if this was a stove, like a wood stove instead of a furnace type, different if the sides were open. Now you have a different, you have a different code. You have different uh, uh, dimensions to be away from your walls, your front, your back, your sides. All that's differently then. So in my case, I don't have to worry about that. Now it'd be different if I had the back turned. I'd have to have that every bit. I think if I'm not mistaken, I have to have that 36 inches from the wall. If I had this turned the other way, so that would be different, but I don't. So uh, there you go with that. So to answer your question about the Luon and stuff, uh, hopefully I answered all the questions there <laughs> that I've seen in the comments. Um, like I said, with the door damper again. Oh, another one. A guy said, you need a bigger shovel. He burns three or four tons of anthracite. I don't know if it's anthracite or bituminous. I'm assuming anthracite, so don't get me wrong here. Uh, he posted uh, about two months ago. A uh, bigger shovel. Well, let's go over a bigger shovel. Now, it depends on what you got. If you got a Mark Harmon or a Chubby, when you open the door, you got like a big 16, 18-inch door there. I don't. This is what I got, and we're looking at about a foot. Well, not even that. Or a size uh, 10 boot. So we're less than that. <laughs> so a bigger shovel would kind of be out of the question. It'd be something if all I had to do is open a big door and shovel it and drop it all in. But here I got to layer it back in here. I don't need something big hitting my sides here. If I had a bigger shovel, you're, you're just going to bang your sides. That's pretty big right there, to be honest. And it only takes me six to eight scoops and I got a layer in there. So I'm good. Um, but good thoughtful comment but not with this type of stove now if you're using the same thing and you're using a bigger shovel okay you might be you might have done it in three three or four scoops good and that's fine whatever whatever works for you so and that, and that's good uh me personally i didn't want something that my wife or my my uh, <coughs> son or whatever might come back here servicing the stove and have to put coal in I didn't need them to be dropping it all over blah, or whatever, you know, or trying to throw it in too much at one time when there's no need. Like I said, this is a 30 inch bed here. You're putting layers in, you're not piling it in. So that's something to remember with this type of stove. Uh, furnace, should I say. And um, so just keep that in mind that good comment. Appreciate it too. Like I said, I take all comments. That's fine. And I notice on some of my videos, it says comments are turned off. I don't know if that's Facebook's reason why. I don't understand why I've never had it before. But so if I don't see it, if you was trying to comment, I'm sorry. Uh, I will address that. If you had a question about something, you know, go to one of my other videos where you've seen comments and post it. And I'll, I will see it. I, I check my videos usually about once a week and, other ones, if somebody left a comment, usually I get it, it shows up that I have a comment. So if it's if it pertains to a different video about something else, I'll be more than happy to respond. So, uh, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> I figured out how I want to do with my coal. And oh, and on another note, when we was talking about the dampers again with a gentleman that asked about, you know, why I had that's open. Don't that thing is barometric. It closes off. Stove heats up, that closes off. This doesn't have any factor then other than when it starts cooling off and opens it open back up as it cools off. Now, as far as putting the uh, damper in the flue here, I did notice when I was burning wood. So on the uh, days it wasn't as cold and I was like, well, I don't even need a lot of fire today. I light one at night. It's going to, you know, temperatures drop to nine and then get up, you know, next day. So I just want to fire through the night. 
I did learn something really quickly, and it really quickly. Now, being this as a door damper, keep this in mind, when you put a damper in this flue, if you start closing it off, let's just say, because you're not going to close it off like you would with the charcoal. Now, you start closing it off, you might have to come back to this bottom draft door and open it a little more to give your box a little more air because if you don't, depending on the wood you're burning and if you got it, you got it, say, stoked up or, or just say it's burning, you got some greener wood in there, it's not so seasoned, you might get a little bit of blowback that's not burning off as they say, for a secondary burn, you might get a little bit of puffs of smoke come out from under the door damper. So, to eliminate that, give it a little more draft down here. And I didn't have a problem. I noticed that once or twice, and when I opened that up a little more, never had that issue again. So, uh, and that, like I said, that was when I was burning some wood on the nights that I, that I just had a lot of fire over the night. And I couldn't burn the coal consistently because I'm not going to sit here and try to light coal every day. I'm not going to do that. That's a waste of coal for our area and everything else. Um, you know, if we have a week or two of cold weather, then I'm going to go to the coal. Uh, the wood, if we're having warm temperatures and then like like we did this, you know, that February, our one, supposedly one of our coldest months, we had 80 degree temperatures for a couple of weeks. Well, not consistently, but we had temperatures get up to the 80s during the day. And that was very unusual, but we did. So, you know, when temperatures are only dropping down, say, at night at thir to 35 degrees here, and then through the daytime for a whole week, the temperatures are going up to 50, 60 degrees, there's no sense in me burning coal constantly. I can just burn the wood, throw a couple of logs in there, keep a little bit going, and be done with it. So there you go. I just want to do that video and answer some of the questions that we had uh, on, on the comments. And I hope I got everybody's because like I said, it's probably the last one I ever do on the stove. I wanted to learn how to burn the, the coal in here and I pretty, I'm pretty sure now I've got that figured out. Uh, so if you have any other questions or comments, just reach out. I don't mind to send a message or whatever, and you can message me. I, I, I'm fine with that. I have no issues with that. But this is me on my Hot Blast 1500. So coal and wood burner furnace. So this, uh, hopefully I answered all the little questions and comments I had about, you know, the door dampers and everything else. And like I said, since I put the damper in, it does slow my wood down. I want to say that it do, it will. You can slow your wood burning time down, okay? But you might have to give a little more air down here just to keep that note again. And when it came to the coal, I noticed some of a difference in the burn time, but not, not really that much. Not really that much. So uh, just keep that in mind. Not really that much. I noticed I could, yes, I could get a little bit longer burn. You get the box a little hotter, and that's the only reason why, uh, because you're closing that off a little more, but it, it burned excellent. It burned the coal excellent. So, and it all depends on how your setup is. You know, mine runs straight up. So it depends on if you, you're going five foot, 10 foot that way, out at an angle and up 30 feet, who knows? So it, it all depends on everything, you know, your your pressure in your home to outside, everything, where you're at, your environment you, you live in. So keep that in mind. So learn how your stove works. That's all I, I cannot stress that enough. Learn how your stove works and works for your area and how you got it set up. But anyway, thanks for looking. This will be my last video I do on this. And y'all have a good night, YouTubers.